How do you feel at Cartwheels? Number one country album. I mean, that's number one. I don't think it will ever hit me. It's such and a weird so thing. There's so many words to describe with how we felt like we were screaming in the kitchen. It was really amazing. Mark's feet aren't really that different than anyone else's. They've developed because of the tremendous use. They look more like hands. Mark is almost always barefooted, and that's the way he likes to be. Putting shoes on him all the time would be like us trying to function with boxing gloves. I'm Mark Goffney. I was born without arms, but that didn't stop me from becoming a professional guitarist. I'm on a journey to find inspiration for my new album by meeting exciting British artists who are also shaping their lives through music. I meet Ward Thomas, the only British country duo to have a UK number one album. I liked Guilty Flowers. Was that oh, a yeah. way of saying, I'm not a pathetic little broken hearted girl, like I'm also a kick ass sort of powerful person? Yeah, that was exactly what we were going for. And we just wanted it to be some girls having fun in London and, you it's know. It's a fun video. Yeah. We had a chance to turn around and just go, yeah, Catherine, literally. Lizzie, number one. Yeah, I think it's still registering because it's just one of those things that we were fingers crossed for a top 40, you know, like we were yeah. so. And we were really proud of this album and it took a lot of hard work. In the studio? Yeah, in the studio here. So I think we were just hoping that people would like it. We were very lucky with the timing of it because there was a lot of things that were happening over here. The Nashville TV series has taken off. Like Dolly mm -hmm. Parton was playing a massive set at Glastonbury and suddenly people were starting to sort of be part of it. But I think we had low expectations because we never thought country music would be a big deal over here. We never thought it was going to be something that everyone loved. And it became less of a gimmick. Yeah. Like We found that when there was country music things going on, people would get dressed up and it was a bit gimmicky. Like you'd say, oh, you know, theme we're to a party. Kind of thing. Sure, yeah. Geez, and so. now people appreciate the music without feeling like they need to put on a cowboy hat. Does it feel like coming home you spent probably a lot of time here working on car oils, is that right? Did you fall asleep on this couch or sort of like? <laughs> we could have gone into a studio where all of the walls were so perfectly aligned that the sound would have been perfect, but mm -hmm. we recorded here in this room because it sounds great and it's just a natural sound and people want to hear the real thing instead of an auto-tuned, glossy track. The more authentic and the more organic you are, the more interesting you are to people. <laughs> I heard in, in an article that actually playing playing Hyde Park, that was 55,000 people. I think that when it came to 55,000 people, it was a very strange experience because you expect to sort of go on stage and when you're on your own in-ear monitors, you kind of don't believe that they actually can hear you. And then if you sort of take your ear out for a moment and you can hear your voice yeah. coming out on those big speakers mm -hmm. or you see your face on one of those screens, you're like, that is the weirdest feeling. But I think the writing process, for, for me, I feel like it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. Every song's different, every day's different, and every year you're going through something different. I feel like when we listen to, you know, Taylor Swift's old stuff and the Dixie Chicks, when we, we listened to all of that when we were teenagers and younger, and you do think, this song is about, you know... Me. Me. We love Johnny Cash and June Carter, and, and um, all our friends were, like, listening to the Spice Girls and Britney Spears and stuff, and um, we were you know, forcing country music among them. And now they love it. They love country music. Do you guys mind if I jam a little bit? Oh I was my gosh, no, I'm so mesmerized. I'm mesmerized. One thing I'm proud of is that I have kind of a, a, a Willie Nelson sort of like that little wear spot. Oh, I love that. Right. I assume, is it completely self-taught? My mother paid for me to get lessons at a local music shop, but the, the guitar teacher wasn't in. And when I showed up for my first lesson, he thought they were pulling his leg. They made it sound like, hey, we got a new guitar student for you. He doesn't have any arms or hands. And he's like, oh, that's funny, guys. And so when, he, when I showed up, he was like, <gasps> and it, 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 anyway, I, I made him feel better. I said, it's okay, I understand. He said, it was, I thought it was a gag. He says, but this is cool. I hear the train are coming. It's coming around the bend. I ain't seen the sunshine since I don't know when I'm stuck in post and prison. The time keeps dragging on. 
Well, I hear the train a coming. Someone's gonna get their butt kicked downstairs. When I was just a baby, my mama told me, son, always be a good boy, don't ever play with guns. I shot a man in Reno just to watch him die. When I hear the whistle blowing, I hang my head and cry. 